Okay, so you got your diversification in your portfolio. You got different assets. You got money here, money there, different assets, real estate, crypto. You got your insurance. You got your wealth planning. You got your tax advice. But what about jurisdiction diversification? What happens if the current country you're in goes to the shit? What happens if the free country you live in right now, it's free apparently. Like, so let's say to example, Canada. Canada is a very free country, considered one of the most free countries in the world. But what happens if the climate and the political environment starts to change? What if certain things start to tweak, where they start to tighten and restrict, where you can travel, where you can invest, where you can open businesses? Is it happening? No, maybe not. But there's a few things that the Prime Minister of Canada has said that just, just like, just maybe think for a second. Well, for example, a year ago when there was those big protests, he was saying some, some people might lose access to travel. Their passport might be taken away or their bank accounts might be frozen. Now, he was probably talking about the really bad actors, the people who are really causing problems in the protests. But let's just think for a second. What happens if you're in a free country? You think it's free and then things start to change. What is it nice to have assets across the world, different bank accounts? A lot of wealthy people are starting to move in that direction. They're starting to put money in different countries, opening different bank accounts, having a portfolio of bank accounts worldwide where the economy is friendly in terms of uh, tax advantages. The political climate is very friendly. Um, there's a lot of stability, security. For example, uh, right now in um, Bali, Indonesia, they just came out with a long-term visa for wealthy people. If you have a, over 140,000 US, you can get a long-term visa in Bali, Indonesia now. So they're trying to attract wealthy investors. to make that very easy. It's called a second home visa. Or not only bank account diversification, what about citizenship portfolio diversification? Having different citizenships building up you know eight or nine different citizenships across the world in countries that have uh, stable political environments where if something were to happen in your primary country you can maybe you know you can move quite quickly and not have worry about bank accounts being frozen or your passport being restricted things like that it's just another way to protect yourself so, you know, in terms of divorce asset protection um, there's all kinds of reasons you might want to have a diversification of different citizenships. I'm not saying to put all your money offshore, but just maybe like, you know, a couple thousand over here, a couple thousand over there. And it's becoming a very uh, big thing, especially for wealthy people now. That's one of the things they're making sure they have in their wealth planning to make sure that you can keep your wealth and get even wealthier. So food for thought.